I hate dying in video games. Well, I would probably hate dying in real life too, but that hasn't happened to me yet. I have died in video games tens of thousands of times, and I'm sure you have as well. It's probably the most widely used mechanic in gaming. There are all sorts of genres that use death as a fail state. Shooters, platformers, open worlders, fighters. When your character dies, you lose the game, and it's just that simple. But maybe not. Death is only one piece of a functioning video game. It has to mesh with dozens and dozens of other systems, like player physics or inventory management or save points or world interactions. And within each of those systems are endless choices. Does it work this way or that way? Do you include this feature or that feature? How a game designer answers those questions determines not just how you play the game, but also the emotional impact of it. And it's often the smallest game design choices that make the biggest impact. For example, Let's talk about dying in online first-person shooters. You may think that there's not much variety. You fight, you die, you respawn, running again and again into the meat grinder until the round is over. And that's true for a vast majority of multiplayer shooters, especially those that focus on deathmatch or objective-based gameplay. Death in those types of games doesn't mean much. Sure, you get frustrated when you die, but a few seconds later, you're back in the fight. There's no real sense of loss. Which means what you do within a particular lifespan doesn't really matter that much. But there are some games that don't feel like that. Games where you feel an overwhelming sense of dread. Worried about the enemy hiding behind every barrel or peeking out of every window. Games that are so thick with tension that every tiny little action you take weighs heavy with tactical significance. And when you die in those games, you feel like a little piece of your pride has been lost forever. Getting a game to feel that intense is all about tweaking the mechanics of death. I'm talking about how players die, how long it takes to die, how long it takes to respawn, where they respawn, what items they spawn with, etc, etc. There are all sorts of minor variables around player death that a game designer can change. And while those individual changes can be small, how they work together can make a huge impact. Think about a simple design decision, like how long it takes a player to respawn. If that time is only a few seconds, then the player treats death as little more than a speed bump. But if that respawn time is a full minute or even longer, they're gonna start playing more cautiously simply because they don't wanna wait that long. Let's add in another design decision. Where does the player respawn? If it's right next to the action, like around the corner from where they died or back with their squad mates, then death is only a temporary lull from the fight. But if they spawn all the way back at headquarters and the front line is far away, that death sucks a lot more. The most extreme example of this is the battle royale genre. It draws a pretty hard line in the sand. No respawning, ever. You get one life and that's it. For being such a small design decision, it's arguably the most distinguishing element of the genre. With no respawning, death feels permanent and that adds so much fear to the game. The longer you survive, the more invested you become in that single life. You feel proud of how much loot you've found and how many gunfights you've lived through. But you also feel pressured to make smart decisions and stay alive so that all that progress isn't wasted. That tension gets the player emotionally invested. Battle Royales aren't the only games that make a player's death feel so foreboding. There are plenty of other shooters that achieve that same level of intensity while also using conventional respawn mechanics. And again, it comes down to small tweaks. The military realism game Squad and its spiritual predecessor, Project Reality, both feature some interesting design choices. They have vehicle respawn timers that can be as long as 30 minutes. That makes risky maneuvers like driving through enemy territory or flying to a hot LZ much more of a gamble. If your vehicle goes down, the whole team suffers. The Red Orchestra series is another favorite of mine because of how quickly you can be killed. With high weapon damage and long range shooting, you are always milliseconds away from death. It's not uncommon to get taken out by a single shot from more than 200 yards away. You feel incredibly vulnerable all of the time. Running from cover to cover, dodging sniper fire and machine gun bursts, it becomes a Herculean effort just to stay alive. And when you do survive that gauntlet, the last thing you wanna do is die and have to run through it all over again. Red Orchestra makes you fear death because of how challenging it is to simply stay alive. Dying in a video game means nothing. 
It's a game over screen that only lasts a few seconds. But if a game is able to make you feel more than that, to make you feel scared of dying and to haunt you after you're dead, now that's a game worth playing. Oh, I just had a dream that you didn't like, subscribe, and comment on our videos. Wouldn't that be a tragedy? You should do that so you always know when we have a new video out. Do it now. Good night.